Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Come on, somebody. Uh, it was like last week or so, it was like uh, in the teens, right? Snow, the whole nine. This, but it's still the day that the Lord has made. Are you hearing me? Yep. It, you know, it got up to the 20s, 30s, right? Might go back down. Who knows? Might, might be a blizzard. Who knows? But this is the day. So it doesn't matter what happens in the day, right? Because we know who made the day. And look, I always say this. You have to be able to trust God when you can't trace God. Amen. And so real quick, I just want to talk to a body of believers. You know, I've, I've talked to a couple saints and, you know, they frustrated, right? You got COVID. Uh, COVID went a lot longer than we thought it was going to go. Uh, COVID interrupted. Uh, COVID disrupt. Uh, we lost loved ones. Uh, we lost, you know, bit, like we lost. But, but here's the deal. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Meaning what? That again, you have to trust God when you can't trace God, when you don't understand. And can I say this to you? There are those of you who are like, man, God has forsaken me. You know, like but God didn't look out for me or God didn't, you know, I saw this in the vision and I know God said he was going to do that. He's still going to do it. Hallelujah. Amen. And maybe it's just easier for me, you know, because it took me 12 years to get a four-year degree and I finally got it and got all the privileges and the rights, right? There were certain jobs I could get, a certain pay I could get, certain benefits I could get when I got. So, so, so maybe, maybe that's why. Maybe because it took me so long, I realized that delay is in denial. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And so there, there are a group of you who you just feel like, man, God didn't come through for my family like I thought he was, or like I prayed he would, or like I believed he would. Like, I look at other families and other people, and they're like, God came through for them. Listen to me. You're not the first one to feel forsaken, <laughs> okay? Okay, and I'm not talking about humans. If I'm not mistaken, Jamie, I think it's in the Word. Uh, Jesus says, Father, why has thou forsaken me? You're not the first one to feel like God let you down. That, that, that God didn't do for you what you thought he should do. Jesus said, I pray that this cup pass me. Meaning what? His desire was that the cup would pass him. The desire was not to go on the cross. But sometimes your desire and God's plans, don't, they, don't, they don't align. And so Jesus said he was tempted, you know, uh, in all ways, such as common to man. Meaning what? Even he felt forsaken. He said it out of his mouth. God, I, Father. Where are you? Father, what are you doing? Father, do you not have my back? Father, what's going on? And, 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 and I love it. Why has thou forsaken me? Even Jesus felt forsaken. But let me tell you something. God was present. God was there because he rose on the third day. Oh, can I get a witness, somebody? He rose on death. Where's your victory? Death, where's your sting? Huh? Are you hearing me? And so oftentimes we get frustrated because we have a plan and we got a will and we got a schedule. Come on, somebody. You know who I'm talking to. You got a schedule. You got a plan. You done mapped everything out and it's not going according to your plan. I'm just asking you to do me a huge favor. I'm just asking you to be patient and be still. Watch how you act when you don't understand. Watch how you talk when you don't understand. Watch how you behave. If you, when you don't understand, because I'm telling you, you say the wrong thing, you do the wrong thing, you feel or believe the wrong thing. I'm telling you, it's going to take you, uh, it's going to take you into a place where the devil wants you to go. All he wants to do is kill, steal and destroy. That's it. The devil seeks to kill, steal and destroy. And I'm telling you, don't uh, look, we, we come from uh, it's, you know, and again, I'm not I'm not being facetious. You know, I'm not challenging, you know, society's uh, parenting style. I'm not. Uh, but but we live in a society where it's soft correction. Amen. It's soft correction. Amen. I, I grew up under uh, hard correction. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And watch this. When, when grandma whipped your butt, you, 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 you better you better trust her when you can't trace her. <laughs> Let me just put it like that. You, uh, uh, let me just put it like that. Like, even though you don't know why she's doing what she's doing or you don't agree with what she's doing, amen, or you don't particularly care for the style in which she's doing it, listen to me very closely. When grandma did with gra grandma's hands, <laughs> uh, grandma's hands, when grandma laid them hands on you, hallelujah, you better be careful how you talk. You better be careful how you talk after you got your butt whipped. 
You better be careful how you act. If you, why? Because grandma had two hands. Hallelujah. Grandma had two hands. Amen. Uh, and, and so when God doesn't do what we want him to do, can you do me a favor? Can you draw nearer? Nearer to thee, O Lord, nearer. Can you draw near when you don't understand what God is doing? Can you pray longer? Amen. If you're praying for 30 minutes and you wake up and you ain't feeling God and you ain't feeling his way, you ain't, can you press toward him for an hour? If you already pray for an hour, can you pray for two hours? Come on, you hear what I'm saying? If, if, if you fast one day, can you fast two days? All I'm trying to tell you is when you're, not, when you're not seeing God do what you think he should do, how you think he should do it, just press toward him. Come on, we talked about that. Just press closer to him. Just hold him. Amen. Just get in his presence. Amen. Just let go. Just let God. But be careful when you think you are forsaken. Be careful when you don't think God understands your timeline. Be careful when you're not getting the things you think you should get. Be careful when your children are not behaving the way you think they should. Be careful on forsaking God. Because God hasn't forsaken you. He has a plan. For I know the plans that I have for you, saith the Lord of hosts. I know. And so I'm talking to somebody. I'm not talking to everybody, but some of you out there, this COVID situation, this not being able to come to church, this not being able to fellowship. Now, some of y'all, you don't mind. In fact, you, you don't care. We'll never come back. Amen. Praise God. But there are those of you who feel like, God, I can't take it no more. God, I can't. He has not forsaken us. He has a perfect plan, and we just don't understand it. But if you would just relax and lean not into your own understanding, but lean with it, rock with it with God. Just lean into God. <laughs> lean with it, rock with it. Just lean into God. Just let go. Just trust him. Just relax. I'm telling you from personal experience, man. <laughs> I'm telling you from personal experience. Look up my look up, look me up at 16 years old where I was and look at me now. I'm telling you from personal experiences. He has not forsaken you. No, he has not done it the way you want him to do it. No, he hasn't. No, he hasn't done it in the time frame you want him to do it. He has not. He hasn't done it in a way you think he had, and he probably won't. But I promise you, he has a perfect plan and a perfect will for your life. And if you would stop fighting him, man, you'd get to it. Hey, man, let's get to the word. I'm sorry. Let's get to the word. Let's get to the word. Now, now, now we're going to do four things. I'm going to start uh, with the first, uh, with all four first, right? And then we're going to get specific. So I showed you a, a chart, right? In this chart, I told you that uh, there are four responsibilities. There's the responsibility you to you, there's a responsibility you to God, there's a responsibility you to others, and then there's a responsibility you for others, right? Uh, and so what's the, what's the difference? Well, one you for others uh, uh, is the house of Israel. The Bible is clear. The Bible says take care of yourself, take care of your home first. It doesn't mean first, second, third, fourth, fifth. It doesn't mean you take care of your family and you forget others. That's not what it means. But, but God is saying take care of your spouse first. Take care of your children first. You know, if a, if a man cannot rule his own home, oh, come on, somebody. He's, not un, he's unfit to rule others. So, so first to the house of Israel, but then to the other most parts of the world. And so, again, God wants us to develop us. Uh, God wants us to develop his, our relationship with him. God wants us to develop our relationship with our family. Hallelujah. And that ain't always easy. And then God wants us to develop our fellowship with the community. Praise God. Just want to make sure you got it. I'm going to walk through it one more time. We, you're going to learn today. Amen. Watch this. It says execution, the carrying out of a plan, y'all. God's plan, God's will, like uh, uh, getting it done. And God wants us to execute in these four areas, right? And listen to me. You don't get to pick and choose. He wants us to execute in every area. Why? When we looked at Daniel and the three Hebrew boys, come on. When we looked at their ability to execute, not only was it a blessing to them, not only was it a blessing to others, amen, but it was a blessing to God. Amen. The, 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 the king said, we running with King Darius said, we going with your God. Hallelujah. We look at Joseph. When Joseph executed for himself, it blessed him. Hallelujah. It blessed his family, his
his father, his brothers. Come on, somebody. It blessed the actual uh, Egyptian nature. Come on. Uh, Y'all not hear me. And then, of course, it blessed God. He brought honor to God. So these are the four areas that we're going to concentrate on over the next few weeks. Why? Because if you can execute on all four of these, I'm telling you, you, you will lack nothing. There are some blessings that I've gotten developing myself. There are some blessings that I receive developing my relationship with God. Listen to me, I tell people this about money all the time, like that, that, that money is a phenomenal resource, right? But when you go uh, 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 to the hospital uh, and somebody has cancer, you can't take money and just put it all over them and they're going to be healed. That's when you need Jesus. But you also can't take prayer to the gas pump, amen, to, to the electric bill, amen. It takes currency. It takes money. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So, so somebody say, Eric, what should you get? Should you get the money? Should you get God? You should get it all. Get as much money as you can get. Get as much God as you can get. Uh, 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 get as many healthy relationships as you can get. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And so what I want you to do, uh, uh, today we're going to talk about you versus you. And I, and I want to show you that it is the will of God that you execute and that God has done everything he can possibly do to help you to execute. Come on, can I get a witness? I want to teach today. God has done everything he can to set you up to execute in every area, starting with execution of self, meaning development of self. Now, I want to go here before I go in the word. Hallelujah. Praise God. I want to go here. I, I need you to understand that. Uh, let's just look at money for for for. Uh, an example. You know, people come to me all the time, pastor, I need another stream of income. Pastor, I need more money. Pastor, I said, listen to me, that's not the truth. The truth of the matter is God has blessed you with a stream. I need you to listen. God, I, there are very few people I've seen in America who don't have a stream of income. Even if you're on welfare, that's a stream of income. When they was passing out, you, you know, the stimulus checks, that's a stream of income. Here's the problem. The Lord showed me it's not a stream of income that's the challenge. The challenge is the stewardship of that stream. Come on, somebody, talk back to me. You don't need another stream. Huh? You don't need no more money. God has, given you a, God has given you a seed that if you plant that seed, if you water that seed, if you care for that seed, that joker going to turn into a tree with a whole bunch of fruit with more seeds. But the, the 16-year-old Eric Thomas, the 19-year-old Eric Thomas, the 22-year-old Eric Thomas with money is not the same person with money at 51 years old. Are you hearing me? It, so it's not, it's not the stream of income. It's how I stewarded that income to get it to where it is today. I I just want to talk in layman's terms. So I want you to do me a favor. Grab a piece of uh, paper. Grab a pen. Hey, man, we about about to get into the word here. I need you to write write down how many streams of income you have. Write that down. I want you. You babysit. Come on. Uh, uh, You paint. Come on. Whatever it is. You got a full-time job. Uh, uh, I was just talking to uh, Francisco's uh, cousin not too long ago. I think it's Adolfo a couple weeks ago, and he said uh, to me, I work at UPS, but then I also have my own construction company. Mm -hmm. That's two streams of income. Are you hearing me? Two streams of income. Listen to me. You don't need another stream right now. Now, God is going to bless you with another stream, but you need to steward the stream you have, meaning that if God gives you a pie, a part of that needs to go to pay and tithe and offerings. Why? Because he said he's going to open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that should not be resu- re- uh, 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 room enough to receive. Uh, then uh, uh, he's saying, take out another portion for yourself. Pay yourself 10%. Come on, are you listening to what I'm saying? Uh, uh, take another 1% to 5% and invest that in some stocks and bonds, annuity, I don't know. And then you take the rest of it and you spend the rest of it. Come on. So, so that means that maybe you shouldn't be in that $3,000 apartment because you're not going to be able to divide that pie up. Oh, you missing what I'm saying. I'm telling you that God has already given you a seed. I'm telling you God has already given you a stream of income. The challenge is you're not stewarding it properly. And so what does that have to do with you versus you? It's development. Now, listen to me. God has delivered on his promise, and God is delivering on his promise. But here's a challenge. In order to activate your greatness, come on, somebody. You, God delivered it. God, God is delivering it, but you got to develop it. <laughs> Am I by myself? Hey, one stream of income, you can take one stream of income and turn one stream of income into five streams of income. Or you can have one stream of income and don't do nothing with it. Listen to me. God has already blessed us with everything we need. Delivered, delivering. <laughs> 
Come on, come on, come on, come on. I want you to write down how many streams of income you have, and I want you to, I want you to ask yourself, how are you stewarding it? I just broke something down for you. 10% to the church, 10% to yourself, 1% to 5% in an investment, in an annuity, in something where your money is growing while you're sleeping. And then the rest of it, come on, in the name of Jesus Christ, you got almost 75% left. That, the problem is not the 75. The problem is what you're doing with the 75. Amen. And so what does that have to do with you versus you? God has already given you the gifts. God has already given you the talents. God has already given you the gifts before you were born, the talents before you were born. The problem is you're not developing it. The, the problem is God gave it to you. You're not steward it. All right, watch this. Develop it. Grow or, oh, <laughs> you missed it. God gave you what you need to grow. He said development is to grow or cause to grow and become mature, advanced, or elaborate. Come on, talk back to me. So let me show you. We're going to go to the scriptures, right? I'm about to show you. God has already delivered, and he's delivering everything you need to execute, saints. Everything. Watch this. The Bible says in Psalms 139 and verse 13, for you created my most inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. Oh, in the name of Jesus Christ. He's saying that before you even came into the world, I, I created you uh, in the innermost parts. Before you came in the world, I knitted you and put you together. Before you came in the world, you're not an accident. You, you, got, you are very intentional and deliberate. Amen. When God chose you in your mama's womb, God knew exactly what he was doing. God gave you every single thing you needed in the womb. So when you come out of the womb, guess what? You got everything you need in the name of Jesus Christ to execute, to carry out, to perform in your own life, your life with God, your life with your family, your life with others. God has given you every single thing you need. So one of the things I like about the, uh, the flight assessment, right, for all of us who take the flight assessment, there are four areas. What I love about it is that we're all four. Amen. We're higher in some. Uh, we adapt uh, lower or higher in some. Some areas we kind of stay the same. But when you look, all four areas, you get a number, which means that before you were even born, God didn't wait for you to come into the earth. God didn't wait for you to go to middle school. God didn't wait for you to go to high school. Come on. God didn't wait for you to go to college. God didn't wait for you to get married. God didn't make God bless you with a stream of gifts and a stream of talents. Come on. And a, and a, and a stream of thought process and an identity and a character that's like no Nobody else is. Even if you were twin, God didn't make y'all just alike. I'm here to tell you today that God has already delivered and God is delivering on his promise. But God has given you something that you got to develop. Hallelujah. Praise God. The difference between money in my hand at 20 is I just spent it. Money in my hand at 50, I'm developing it, meaning I'm finding ways to grow it. I'm finding ways to advance it. I'm finding ways to elaborate on it. Come on, you not hear what I'm saying. I'm, I'm, finding, I'm finding a way uh, 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 to mature it. You, you ever heard that about money? You're maturing your assets? Come on. And so praise God. Psalms 139, 13. I want to read it again. For you created my innermost parts, my innermost parts. Come on, somebody. My inner, my inmost parts. I'm sorry. For you created my inmost parts. Come on. Are you seeing that? For you created my inmost being. Come on. You knit me together in my mother's womb. Come on, somebody. Psalms 139, 13. It's right here. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. God, you ain't, you ain't, God ain't just getting started with you. you, you God ain't just getting started. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, watch this. I, I praise you because I'm fearfully, oh, come on, and wonderfully made. Listen to me. You don't need nothing else to blow up. You don't need nothing else to make money. You don't need nothing else to live where you want to live or have what you want to have, be what you, now listen to me very closely. I need you to do me a favor. There are those of us who think big, and there are those of us, you know, who don't think that big. Don't let nobody tell you you're thinking too big. Don't let nobody tell you you're doing the most. If it's in your brain, God created that for you. Now, it, you need to mature it. You need to develop it. But, but if you're thinking big, you, if you're thinking of making billions, amen, God told you to do that. And God told you to do that for a specific reason. And it is not, it's not my job to evaluate that or judge that or tell you what I feel about it. That's between you and God. Why? Because when God made you, you can do all things through Christ. Why? Because you're fearfully and wonderfully made. You weren't just tossed together. 
You wasn't just a happenstance. God wasn't, <laughs> God wasn't rushing when he made you. I don't care what somebody says about uh, your, your skin color. I don't care what somebody says about the texture of your hair. I don't care what somebody said about your nose and your lips. I don't care what other kids call you or tease you. I don't care what adults say about you. You got a lay, this ain't right on your face. God made you fearfully. Bump, bump some human with some opinion. God didn't make no junk. Hallelujah, praise God. You were fearfully and wonderfully made. God, God didn't want you to do nothing but execute. So that's why he made you fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful, and I know that full well. Come on, the psalmist said, I, I know I'm not an accident. I'm talking to somebody today. I know I'm not an accident. I know, I know I'm the right color. I know I'm the right height. I know, I'm, I, I know my brain works the right way. I know, I know I got it going on. I don't care what man says. I don't care who teases me. I don't care who tries to compare me to them or compare. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. God didn't make no mistake on me. Hallelujah, praise God. And I just need you to understand before we get started that God has delivered on his promise. God is delivering uh, on his promise. But God can give you whatever he want to give you. If you don't develop it, you're not going to ever have be and do what God would have you to do. Praise God. Let's go to the word. Hallelujah. So, so I want to show you all something. Uh, uh, God is so good. The Bible says uh, in uh, Jeremiah uh, 1 and 5, before I was formed in my mother's womb. I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. <laughs> Come on, saints. I'm not trying to be deep. I'm not trying to be deep. The Bible is what it said. Before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. God is saying before I even... Before I even started the process, I started the process. Oh, come on. Come on. Y'all know, do y'all understand why I get on these stages so boldly? You understand why I go into the prison so boldly? Youth detention so boldly? You know, I wake up and move so boldly because I know I ain't no, I'm not a mistake. That even before my mama knew that I was in her womb, even before she knew she was pregnant, even before I was there, God already knew. And God says, I, I want Eric Thomas. And before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nation. Before you were born, God set you apart. Hallelujah. Your mama could tell when you was three years old. Come on, Jamie, you know what I'm talking about. We know our baby's characteristics at five. You know who they're going to be. Jalen ain't changed. Jalen ain't, ain't changed. They may have matured. They may have developed and grown, but they're the same people. Jalen was independent when he was four. He would say he was four years old. He was running around trying to be with other people. Jada always been a homebody. Jada never, ain't, nothing has changed. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You've been set apart. Act like it. Stop judging yourself according to other people or, or what other people's preferences are. You feel like you got to be what they are so you can be loved and liked. If don't nobody love you, don't nobody like you, God loves you. God like you. God form you. And that's enough. And I mean that. Some of you, your life is messed up because you're trying to be liked by some group or liked and loved by some committee or liked and loved by some community or liked and loved by some group or some organization, right? Some fraternity, some sorority, some gang. You better love yourself. You better be grateful for the fact that even though they don't think you've been set apart, God said you've been set apart. You were born to execute. You were born to get stuff done. You was born to win. Are you, you were born to win. Everything about you, bring your babies to the front of this community. I want to tell y'all, four-year-olds, five, seven-year-old, eight-year-old, 10-year-old, 13-year-old, you ain't got to commit suicide. You, I'm talking to grown people too. You ain't got to worry about because somebody said you, uh, you're not uh, 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 skinny enough. Your skin complexion ain't. You're not smart enough. You're not tall enough. Man, and the devil is a lie. No human made me. God didn't make no mistake. He said you are fearfully and wonderfully made. I know who your parents going to be. I knew who your great parents, great grandparents were. I got the DNA. I, I made you for a reason like this because something about the way I made you, if you would just do what I told you to do and be what I told you to be, you will, you will naturally be blessed. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm so glad I don't have to be jealous. I'm so glad I don't have to be envious. I'm so glad I don't have to want what, uh, 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 what other people have. I'm so blessed. God has blessed me. I don't, I don't got to uh, uh, look at other people's homes, other people's businesses, other people's bank accounts, other people. I don't have to look, but God has blessed me. Hey Amen. If you get into that rat race, I don't care what you have. Somebody always got more. Right. And you're looking at what they got. I know I, God has blessed me with what he's blessed me with. And I'm going to mature it. I'm going to advance it. I'm going to elaborate on that thing. I'm going to develop it in the name of Jesus Christ. 
Hallelujah. Let's go to this. I want to show y'all something in the Word. Amen. I want to show y'all something in the Word, and I'm going to give you a challenge. Hallelujah. Judges 13 and 1. And the Bible said, again, the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord. So the Lord delivered them into the hands of the Philistines for 40 years. Hallelujah. Praise God. But the Bible declares in Judges 13, 2, and a certain man, Zorah, named Manoah, from the clan of Danites, had a wife who was childless and unable to give birth. Oh, I get excited just reading that. I know so many people uh, in the body who couldn't or thought they couldn't have kids, and now they got too many. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Listen to me. D -d Delay don't mean denial. Just because God ain't on your schedule and he ain't on your time, it don't mean he ain't coming. I promise you he coming. As T.D. Jake say, get ready, get ready, get ready. He coming. Clean your spot up. Amen. Make room for it. Amen. Get prepared. 20, this, this year, he, he, he coming. He coming with a blessing with your name on it. He coming. Instead of worrying about when you're going to get it, just get prepared for it. And I love this part. And the angel of the Lord appeared to her and said, you are barren and childless, but you are going to become pregnant and give birth to a son. I just want to show y'all. Now see to it that you drink no wine or other fermented drinks, that you do not eat anything unclean. Oh, come on, somebody. He's this special. You, you, will, you will become pregnant and have a son who, whose head is to never be touched with a razor because the boy is to be a Nazarite, dedicated to God from the womb. Oh, do me a favor. Can you tell your babies right now that they were dedicated from the womb, that, that, that they weren't loved when they came out? They weren't loved when they started playing sports. They weren't loved when they started getting good grades. They weren't loved when they cleaned their room. They weren't loved when they act right. Can you just tell them they were dedicated from the womb? And for my grown folk, can you just accept that you were dedicated from the womb? Can you stop looking for affirmation from your mama? She might not give it to you. She might not have gotten none. Can you stop looking for affirmation from your daddy? You don't know what your daddy went through. You don't know what your grandparents went through. Can you stop trying to get affirmed by other people? Can you stop trying to have relationships with other people before you have it with God, the person who manufactured you, the person that brought you in this earth. Listen to me, you were anointed from the womb. <laughs> he was dedicated to God from the womb. You were dedicated to God from the womb. Your mama didn't even know you was in there. God knew you was in there. God's got a plan for you. God's got a purpose for you. God's got a will for you. God wants you to execute. Hallelujah. Before he was even born, God set him up to execute. God has blessed you to be able to execute from the womb. And he will take the lead, <laughs> a leader in delivering Israel from the hands of the Philistines. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. I want to show y'all something. I want to show y'all something. Watch this. Watch this scripture. Hallelujah. Amen. When I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. What am I saying to you today? I'm saying to you today that God has delivered on his promise. Hallelujah. God is delivering on his promise. Amen. But, but, but God cannot develop for you. In the name of Jesus, God's going to give you a stream of income. God can't make you do right. God can't make you steward that. Are you listening to what I'm saying? God can't make you steward it. I'm showing you a text where, where by the grace of God, the man of God, even before he came out, God bless him. Don't, don't, don't give him nothing unclean. Uh, don't know why. Don't put a razor to his head. He is specifically a Nazarite. He's going to come on this earth to do great things. He will deliver, he will deliver uh, uh, the Israelites out of the hands of the Philistines who have been under their rule for 40 years. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Are you listening to me? God gave you everything you need from birth. God gave you everything in the womb. God picked your parents. He didn't make no mistake. I ain't had no both of my parents. He didn't make no mistake. He knew you didn't need both, but I'm trying to tell you that from the womb, God has already blessed you. The problem is you're not developing what God gave you. You're not, you're, you're, you're not maturing it. You're not advancing it. You're not elaborating on it. Come on. God gave it to you. God gave you some gifts. God, God, God bless you with certain opportunities. God, 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 God has given you everything you need to have, be, and do. And you sitting here whining, crying. You sitting here being mad at God. You sitting here living in lack. You, you ain't here in poverty with a poverty mindset. You wonder why other people not getting blessed and you not getting blessed. It's because they, if the grass is greener on the other side, it's because they developed it. 
If the grass is greener on the other side, it's because they developed it. They matured it. They advanced it. They elaborated on it. Come on, develop. They, they developed. They, 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 they planted a certain seed. They understood what that seed was, a Bermuda seed for grass. They understood the best environment for Bermuda. They understood a certain length for Bermuda. They understood how the Bermuda has to be water. They understood that they needed to take all of a uh, 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 debris off the top. They knew that they needed to line that boy. Listen to what I'm trying to tell you. They knew that Bermuda grows in a certain, they developed it. My next door neighbor's grad always fired. Why? Because he's out there in the morning. He's out there in the afternoon. He's out there at night. When we used to live in Huntsville, Alabama, we had a guy called Grass Man. His grass was so immaculate that he used to be in magazines. An older gentleman, Jamie, he would have a light. And at night, Jamie, you would just see him at night doing certain things to the grass. I'm like, what is he doing? Then you see him in the daytime. He would water it and cut it. He was always out there developing it. And his grass looked better than anybody's grass. Why? Because I wasn't developing mine. I was just letting it grow. I didn't have no schedule when to cut it. I didn't know what the length was. I didn't care. And so my grass was a brown uh, um, most of the year. I didn't water it properly or water it at a certain time. Jamie, do you know that you're even supposed to water it at a certain time? That, that you shouldn't water it during the day when it's 80 degrees in Huntsville, Alabama, because it's it's, the water's going to be hot? and damage that, oh, you're not hearing what I'm saying. I'm trying to tell you that God has already given you a stream of income. God has already given you a stream of character. God has already given you a, a stream of gifts. God has already given you a stream of talent. What are you doing with it? You mad at God, you should be mad at yourself. Hallelujah, watch this. The Bible says in Judges 13, 24, I just want you to see that it's real. And the woman bare a son and call his name Samson. And the child grew, and the Lord blessed him. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Did you see that? And the Lord blessed him. Hallelujah. And the Lord blessed him. All right, three things, and I'm going to get you out of here. Three things. Number one, write this down. Amen. I, I, you, you versus you. I, I got to develop me now. That's what I love about the assessment. I saw the assessment, and it brought to light some stuff. The assessment brought some light. It brought life to my gifts, but it also brought light uh, to some of my kryptonite. It, it, brought, it, brought, it brought light that I'm forgetful, that I can't do too much at once. It brought to light that I'm a people pleaser. It brought to light that I procrastinate, right? So watch, watch what happens. When God does all that he does for you, he's building you up, but now we're tearing it down. I, I just want you to see it. We're built, God is building up on one side. We, I'm tearing it down with procrastination because I'm not where I'm supposed to be when I'm supposed to be there. I'm, I'm turning in papers late. I'm not turning them in at all. I'm coming to class late. Come on, I'm procrastinating. I got so much going on in the day that I forget half the stuff that I'm supposed to do. Hey Amen. I get into my feelings. I get emotional. So, so I, I'm defensive. You trying to tell me something? You trying to, you, you trying to enlighten me? I'm, I don't want to hear it. I'm, 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 I have an independent spirit. I want to do what I want to do when I want to do it. Hey Amen. Uh, I left home at 16. Rebellious. Are you here? Are, are you listening to what I'm trying to tell you? God, like, I can give you whatever I want to give you, but if I give it to you and you don't develop it, if I give it to you and you destroyed it, who fault is that? Is it mine? You don't have as much money in your bank account that you should have. It ain't God's fault. You should be vacationing. Where more do you vacation? It ain't God's fault. Come on, somebody. Come on. You, God, you, you, your marriage should be way sweet. You're not developing. God has, God has stuffed you. God got a plan, and you're not developing. You can't get mad at God because he's giving you something and you're not doing nothing with it. So here are the three things we're going to do. Number one, we're going to mature, which means fully grow. I remember I got to a point where I was like, excellence is no longer an option. Grow up, Eric. Everything you touch, hallelujah, everything you touch got your name on it. It represents your mama and your daddy. It represents your family's last name. Everything you touch represents your ancestors. Everything you touch, Eric. Start doing it with excellence, M mature, grow up. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I behaved as a child. But when I became a man, I developed. When I became a man, I developed. Grow up, Eric. Grow up. Do your schoolwork. Do, do it early. Turn it in. Get it back. Do it early. When your wife tells you to wash the clothes, don't wait till the next day or next day. Wash your clothes. When you wash them, dry them. When you dry them, pull them out and fold them. When you fold them, put them up. Stop being a child. You got your clothes sitting in the washer. Okay, I'm just being real. 
I, I, this is the old E.T. I didn't wash some clothes. They didn't sat in there for so many days that they smell worse than they smell when I, <laughs> come on somebody, am I by myself? They smell worse the third day of me leaving the washing machine than they did when I wore them. Now, now, uh, now I got to a point where I washed the clothes and dried the clothes, but now I'm living out the dryer. Oh, Jamie, am I by myself? I'm getting socks out the dryer, underwear out the dryer, shorts out the dryer, my stuff just sitting there. God is saying, you got to mature, son. I can't, I can't make you wash clothes, right? You got to mature. Then I went from washing and drying and putting them on top of the dryer, and they sitting there for days. Come on, then I would wash, dry, fold, but now they sitting in the kitchen for three, four, come on. And I wonder why me and my wife is getting to it. She OCD. She's saying when you start something, finish it. God had blessed me. God delivered on his promise. He did exactly what he said he was going to do. He gave me a gift. He gave me, he, that will make room for me. He gave me a character. He gave me integrity. He gave me a voice. He gave me passion. He gave me energy. But when you mix that with procrastination, with manipulative, with lying, when you mix that with showing up late, when you mix that with being emotional, when you mix that with you can't tell me what to do. Now, this is me. Right down was you. <laughs> that, that might not be, but I'm telling you, I looked at me and realized, bro, you got to grow up. You got to get to a point where excellence is no longer an option. Not, not you excellent when people watching you. Excellent when you're going to get a check. You just got to be excellent all the time. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And I told y'all when I, when I went to Dubai, it showed me what excellence looked like. And I'm like, yo, God, I got it. That's what I have to do. Number two, uh, advance. It moves. It means move in a purposeful way. Again, advance. It means move in a purposeful way, right? And showing determination. What does that mean? God is like, Eric, what are you doing with your Monday? I gave you Monday. I gave you Tuesday. I gave you Wednesday. I gave you Thursday. I gave you Friday. I gave you Saturday. I gave you Sunday. What are you doing with it? We got to work. We got to wake up, y'all, and be purposeful. I'm telling you, when I was in Michigan, oh, come on, y'all. Me and Jamie, Carl, I, 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 we doing podcast. We doing certain. We, bro, are y'all listening to what I'm saying? A purposeful day. I'm making phone calls. I'm doing certain. I, are you hearing what I'm saying? You, we got to stop having these days where we just waste days. We just because we retire or because we don't feel like it or because we're not committed, dedicated. You're wasting the day. Number two is advance. Move in a purposeful way. Come on. That's why I said the Nobel Prize. That's why I said I want to win the Nobel Prize. Why? Because I need something to wake up to. I did the four year, the master, the PhD. I need to wake up for something. Now, that's why I'm taking kids to Super Bowl. That's why, that's why I took them to the Super Bowl. That's, listen to me. That's why I'm taking them to Dubai. I got to have a purposeful life. Some of y'all, all you doing is just waking up and reading your Bible. And ain't nothing wrong with your Bible. Ain't nothing wrong with praying. But what, what are you fueling yourself up to do what? Are you hearing me, Jamie? You reading all that word. What are you fueling yourself for? You doing all that praying. What are you fueling yourself for? You doing all of that, uh, 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 holy, holy, filled with the Holy Ghost. You doing all of that. What, 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 what is it fueling you for? To go take a nap? To stay in your house? To watch TV? To just take care of your family? What, uh, what, you getting all this Holy Ghost for what? So advance means purpose and then showing determination. Man, I promise y'all, we were coming back in December, y'all. Hallelujah. Then we were coming back in January. And then we were coming back in February. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now we're coming back in March. Are you hearing what I'm trying to tell you? We got to be determined. So look at the church. When you get here, look, even though it was COVID, we was just pressing through stuff. Even though it was COVID, I still had to pay rent. My daughter's still in school. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I still got to pay the HOA. I still got to pay the insurance. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You got to be determined. Advance means showing some determination. I, and she pressed her way through to touch the hem of his garment. You got, you got to stop. Uh, uh, letting your Achilles heel, uh, your weakness, you gotta let, you gotta stop letting that stop you. You gotta, you gotta grow up and just say, yo, at some point, uh, while, while God is building, I got to build with God. Come on, at some point, while God is building my life, I gotta get in there with God. I gotta put on my, uh, 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 uh work clothes and I gotta get in there and help God. And then finally, elaborate, which means to carefully arrange, right? Carefully arrange or to be detail-oriented. That's my final one for you. God wants you to develop. He wants you to elaborate on the gift that he gave you. <laughs> now, I'm just going to be transparent with y'all. I remember there was a time I was making about $2,500, $5,000. I just left Dubai, made $180,000. Listen to me very closely. How did I do it? Uh, uh, when God first gave me the gift, 
All I studied was the gift. That's all I studied. All I studied was the Bible. All I studied was the strong uh, concord. That's it. I just studied the word. I just prayed. I, I just made sure that when I got to the spot, I was filled with the Holy Ghost. 3,500, 5,000. Jamie, filled with the Holy Ghost. Five grand, filled with the Holy Ghost. But then when I started saying, you know what? I'm going to get these degrees and I'm going to see about having more content to talk about. Yep, I'm going to learn how to analyze, to evaluate, to implement. Are you hearing me? To apply. Oh, come on, somebody. You know what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. You know what I'm talking about. And God says, son, you got to be more detail-oriented. And I'm telling you, when I went to uh, Dubai, I studied. What, what, what is this industry? Network marketing. Good. I got it. What do they need? They need strategies on recruitment, and then they need strategies on retention. I got it. When I go to the NFL, the NBA, what do they need? They need people to help kids who already made their goals become a reality. Are you hearing me? Advance. Kids who already bought their mama a house. Kids who already bought them a house. Kids at 22 Two, twenty-three, who have the finer cars, right? Who own the yachts, right? Who already have an investment portfolio of 40, 50 million, 80 million dollars. Amen. But God says, I need you to learn how to take them to another level. I need you to show them that it, they ain't finished yet. And so I began to study how, how do you move people, right? Right. How do you get people to, to progress and go from point A to point B? I went to school for it. I read books for it. I go to conferences for it. I listen to audio books. My wife read a book. I make her read the book. She reading to me. Are you hearing me? And give me the nuggets. She, oh, you not hearing me. You got to elaborate on it. And I was only doing 5,000 when I was praying, filled with the Holy Ghost, going to church. But when I got more detail oriented, you're not listening to what I'm saying. When I got the assessment, the, the, the values, the attributes, the disc, and I started studying and I started putting more detail and more structure and I started carefully uh, 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 arranging. <laughs> Uh, me and Jamie was just in the same spot. Hey Amen. We did something for a corporate company and we did something for Microsoft for Black History Month. I'm telling you, I do my homework. I'm asking them. I sent a survey. I want to know what are the top three challenges? What is the vision statement? What are y'all trying to do? What do y'all want to come? Are you hearing me? I just, I just don't have a gift. I'm developing the gift and it went from $2,500 to $3,000 to $180,000. And now we're looking at working with major companies and we're looking, we're staring at an eight figure, nine figure deal down even as we speak, multiple ones. And I've attracted billionaires in my life. Why? Because I've carefully arranged, I've developed, I'm elaborate, I'm more detailed on the gift. Hallelujah, you're standing right now, you're saying, God, I get it, I get it. It's like money. It's like one stream of income. In order for that money to grow, yep, I have to be mature. I've got to develop it. I got to, I got to take that money and give it an assignment. I got to take that money and tell it what to do instead of that money telling me what to do. Same thing with my character. I get it, God. You've blessed me with gifts and talents and opportunities and resources and people, but now I have to develop it. I've got to mature it. Father, we come now in the name of Jesus Christ, and we just help you. To, we ask that you help us to develop. In the name of Jesus, help us to develop it, Lord. Help us to take it to the next level. You gave it to us, and you said, I'm never going to leave you or forsake you. But there's some things you're not going to do for us. There's some things that angels can't do for us. There's some things the Holy Ghost can't do for us. There's some things we have to do for ourselves. You gave it. You, we, we have grass. We got to cut it, water it properly, feed it properly, put it in the right environment. We have to mature it. So help us to grow up, Father, and stop tearing down. Help us to stop building with one hand, tearing down with the other, and put us in a position, Father, where we advance, where we mature, where we elaborate. Forgive us for our sins. We know that with each level of development comes more money, comes more relationships, comes healthier relationships. Hallelujah. As we develop, our lives develop. As we stay stagnant, our lives are stagnant. As we, as we progress, our lives progress. Nothing changes for us if we don't change. And so help us to change. Help us to change. Help us to change. Forgive us for our sins and our shortcomings. And bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us this week. For those who've expressed an interest in supporting our ministry, please use our cash app, dollar sign a place of change APOC for your donations and tithes. If you prefer more traditional options, please visit our website at www.apocministry.org where you can make your donation via PayPal, credit card, or certified check or money order. 
We look forward to seeing all of you for our midweek service Wednesday evenings at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with Pastor T.J. Tyus. On behalf of our pastors and their families and your APOC family, we wish you all a very blessed week.